The Battle of the Ardennes was a battle of the First World War fought on the frontiers of France, Germany, Belgium and Luxembourg from 21 to 23 August 1914. The German armies defeated the French armies and forced the French armies to retreat. The battle was part of the larger Battle of the Frontiers, the first battle of the Western Front. Chapter 1 – Background Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Belgium Belgian military planning was based on an assumption that other powers would eject an invader but the likelihood of a German invasion did not lead to France and Britain being seen as allies or for the Belgian government intending to do more than protect its independence. The Anglo-French Entente had led the Belgian government to think that the British attitude to Belgium and that it had come to be seen as a protectorate. A Belgian general staff was formed in 1910 but the chef d'état Major General de Lamy, Lieutenant General Harry Jungleth was retired on 30 June 1912 and only replaced in May 1914 by Lieutenant General Chevalier Antonin, Baselius de Morinville, who began work on a contingency plan for the concentration of the army and met railway officials on 29 July. Belgian troops were to be massed in central Belgium, in front of the National Redoubt of Belgium ready to face any border. While the fortified position of Liege and fortified position of Namur were left to secure the frontiers. On mobilization, the king became commander in chief and chose where the army was to concentrate. Amid the disruption of the new rearmament plan, the disorganized and poorly trained Belgian soldiers would benefit from a central position to delay contact with an invader, but it would also need fortifications for defense, which were on the frontier. A school of thought wanted a return to a frontier deployment in line with French theories of the offensive. Belgian plans became a compromise in which the field army concentrated behind the river Gita with two divisions forward at Liege and Nama. Chapter 1 Section 2 – schlieffen Maltke Plan Field Marshal Alfred Graf von Schlieffen was chief of the German general staff from 1891 until his retirement in 1906. A student of Karl von Clausewitz, like other Prussian officers, he had been taught that the heart of France lies between Paris and Brussels. In 1839, the Treaty of London masterminded by the British diplomat Lord Palmerston was signed by France, Prussia, Russia, Austria, and the United Kingdom creating the independent Kingdom of Belgium. France and Russia joined in a military alliance in 1892 which threatened Germany with the possibility of a war on two fronts. German strategy gave priority to an offensive operation against France and a defensive against Russia. Planning would be determined by numerical inferiority, speed of mobilization, concentration and the effect of modern weaponry. The Germans expected frontal attacks to be costly and protracted, leading to limited success, particularly after the French and Russians modernized the fortifications on their frontiers with Germany. To evade the fortified frontier with France, Schlieffen devised a plan that by 1898-99 envisioned German forces rapidly passing between Antwerp and Namur to take Paris from the north, thus delivering France a quick, and decisive defeat. The German left flank in occupied Alsace would tempt the French into attacking there, drawing the French forces away from Paris and the German right. In its 1906 version, the Schlieffen plan would allocate six weeks and seven-eighths of the Imperial German army to overwhelm France while the remaining force was to remain in East Prussia to contest the Russians. Helmut von Moltke the Younger succeeded Schlieffen in 1906 and was less certain that the French would conform to German assumptions. Moltke adapted the deployment and concentration plan to accommodate an attack in the center or an enveloping attack from both flanks as variants to the plan, by adding divisions to the left flank opposite the French frontier, from the circa 1,700,000 men expected to be mobilized in the west here. The main German force would still advance through Belgium and attack southwards into France, the French armies would be enveloped on the left and pressed back over the Meuse, Aisne, Somme. Was, Marne, and Seine, unable to withdraw into central France. The French would either be annihilated or the maneuver from the north would create conditions for victory in the centre or in Lorraine on the common border. Moltke planned for a force of about 320,000 men to defend Alsace-Lorraine south of Metz, 
400,000 men to invade France and Luxembourg through the Ardennes and 700,000 more troops to invade Belgium. Chapter 1 Section 3, Plan 17 After the defeat in the Franco-Prussian War, France had been humiliated, forced to pay an indemnity of 5 billion francs and lost the provinces of Alsace and Lorraine to the new German Empire, so as to permanently put France on the defensive. Though the French did indeed build an extensive amount of fortifications along their border with Germany, after thirty years' plans turned offensive, thanks in no small part to Ferdinand Foch. France had a population and birth rate smaller than those of Germany and invented the concept of Ellen Vital, and decided on a strategy of offensive to the limit, making the will to fight the cornerstone of French military planning. Colonel Louis Loiseau de Grandmaison, took up Fox doctrine and delivered two speeches before the École Militaire that set the foundations of Plan 17, which was formally adopted in May 1913. French strategists took account of the possibility of envelopment by the German right and calculated that the more powerful the German right, the weaker the centre and left would be. The French decided to concentrate their forces on the Rhine, planning to break the German left and centre on either side of Metz, to cut off the German right and defeat the German armies in detail. Under Plan 17, the French peacetime army was to form five field armies of about two million men, with groups of reserve divisions attached to each army and a group of reserve divisions on the flanks. The armies were to concentrate opposite the German frontier around Epinal, Nancy, and Verdun Mezieres, with an army in reserve around Saint Menehold and Commercy. Since 1871, Railway building had given the French general staff 16 lines to the German frontier against 13 available to the German army, and the French could afford to wait until German intentions were clear. The French deployment was intended to be ready for a German offensive in Lorraine or through Belgium. The French expected that the Germans would use reserve troops but also assumed that a large German army would be mobilized on the border with Russia, leaving the Western Army with sufficient troops only to advance through Belgium, south of the rivers Meuse and Sambre. French intelligence had obtained a 1905 map exercise by the German general staff, in which German troops had gone no further north than Nama and assumed that plans to besiege Belgian forts were a defensive measure against the Belgian army. A German attack from southeastern Belgium towards Mezières and a possible offensive from Lorraine towards Verdun, Nancy and Saint Die was anticipated. The plan was a development of Plan 16 and made more provision for the possibility of a German offensive through Belgium. The first, Second and Third Armies were to concentrate between Epinal and Verdun opposite Alsace and Lorraine, the Fifth Army was to assemble from Montmédy to Sedan and Mezières and the Fourth Army was to be held back west of Verdun, ready to move east to attack the southern flank of a German invasion through Belgium or south against the northern flank of an attack through Lorraine. No formal provision was made for joint operations with the British Expeditionary Force but discrete arrangements had been made between the French and British general staffs. During the Second Moroccan Crisis in 1911, the French had been told that six British divisions could be expected to operate around Mabouge. Chapter 1 Section 4 Declarations of War At midnight on 31 July to 1 August, the German government sent an ultimatum to Russia and announced a state of Kriegsjufar during the day, the Turkish government ordered mobilization and the London Stock Exchange closed. On 1 August, the British government ordered the mobilization of the navy, the German government ordered general mobilization and declared war on Russia. Hostilities commenced on the Polish frontier, the French government ordered general mobilization and next day the German government sent an ultimatum to Belgium, demanding passage through Belgian territory, and German troops crossed the frontier of Luxembourg. Military operations began on the French frontier, the bow was bombarded by the German light cruiser SMS Augsburg and the British government guaranteed naval protection for French coasts. On 3 August, the Belgian government refused German demands and the British government guaranteed military support to Belgium, should Germany invade. Germany declared war on France, the British government ordered general mobilization and Italy declared neutrality. On 4 August, the British government sent an ultimatum to Germany which expired at midnight on 4-5 August, Central European time. 
Belgium severed diplomatic relations with Germany and Germany declared war on Belgium. German troops crossed the Belgian frontier and attacked Liege. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, French Offensive Preparations French Commander-in-Chief Joseph Joffrey ordered an attack through the Ardennes Forest in support of the French invasion of Lorraine. According to the pre-war French war strategy document, Plan 17, German forces in the area were only expected to be light, with French light, rapid-firing artillery proving advantageous in a wooded terrain such as that found in the Ardennes. By 20 August, however, it was becoming clear, first to General Charles Lonrezac's French Fifth Army, and then to Commander-in-Chief Joseph Joffrey, that a massive German presence was gathering in the area. That same day the Germans launched a counter-attack against the French advance into Lorraine. Even so, Joffrey ordered an invasion of the Ardennes on 20 August for the following day. Chapter 3, Rattle Joffrey issued instructions on 18 August but held back the 3rd and 4th armies because air and cavalry reconnaissance found few German troops opposite the two armies, only a large force moving northwest, 25 to 31 miles away. On 19 August the 4th Army of General Fernand de Langle de Carey was ordered to occupy the bridges over the Semwas but not to advance into Belgium until the German offensive began. A premature attack would advance into a trap rather than give time for the Germans to empty Luxembourg of troops before the French advanced. On 20 August the German armies in the south attacked the French 1st and 2nd armies and next day the 3rd and 4th armies began their offensive. The 4th army crossed the Semois and advanced towards Neufchateau, and the 3rd army of General Pierre Ruffy attacked towards Arlon, as a right flank guard for the 4th army. South of Verdun, the 3rd army was renamed Army of Lorraine and was to watch for a German offensive from Metz which left the remainder of the Third Army free to concentrate on the offensive into Belgium. The French armies invaded Belgium with nine infantry corps but ten German corps and six reserve brigades of the Fourth and Fifth Armies lay between Metz and the north of Luxembourg. The German Fourth Army under Albrecht, Duke of Württemberg, and Fifth Army of Crown Prince Wilhelm had moved slower than the First, Second and Third Armies and the French offensive towards them was reported on 21 August. The French armies had few maps and were unaware of the size of the German force opposite, as the Third Army brushed aside small German detachments. On the 22nd of August in the Third Army area, the V Corps attacked Dugin German troops at Lungui at 5 a.m. in thick fog and heavy rain, with no artillery support. As the fog lifted, German artillery caught the French guns in the open and silenced them. A German counterattack routed a French division and the Corps was not rallied until the evening. To the north the 4th Corps also advanced in fog and encountered German troops dug in near Verton and was forced back also with a division routed. On the southern flank the Vi Corps was pushed back a short distance. In the 4th Army area the 2nd Corps on the right flank managed to keep level with the 3rd Army to the south but was not able to advance further. The Colonial Corps on the left was defeated at the Battle of Rossignol, 9.3 miles south of Neufchateau, and had 11,646 casualties but the 5th Colonial Brigade on the left easily reached Neufchateau before being repulsed with many casualties. Further north 12 Corps advanced steadily but the 17th Corps beyond was outflanked and the 33rd Division lost most of its artillery. On the northern flank the 11 and 9 Corps were not seriously engaged. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Analysis Charbonneau explained that the defeat of the Colonial Corps was caused by faulty reconnaissance, the ineffectiveness of advanced guards in causing delay to advancing German units and that French offensive tactics neglected the importance of obtaining a superiority of fire, which had led to reckless attacks. The quality of the German opponents was not mentioned but German reconnaissance had been effective, communication between commanders and subordinates had not broken down, mutual support between neighboring units had occurred and German artillery had provided continuous close fire support. At Neufchateau, the French colonial infantry had been outgunned and outnumbered by German units, 
which had been able to engage all their forces quickly. The French 12 Corps had a greater number of guns but was not able to overcome two German infantry battalions. German artillery had engaged the colonial brigade from close range but when in a hastily occupied defensive position, the French had nullified much of the German artillery fire, French troops caught in the open had been annihilated. Both sides had attempted to gain fire superiority before advancing and once this had been achieved by the Germans, they had been able to maneuver without severe casualties. The French commanders were ordered by Joffrey to continue the offensive on 23 August as early as possible, since his strategy depended on the success of the Third and Fourth Armies. Ruffy replied in the morning that the attack could not begin until his divisions had reorganized and in the early afternoon found that the Germans had forestalled another advance, by pushing the V Corps in the center back for 5.0 miles which led to the rest of the army falling back level. In the 4th Army area, the 33rd Division of 17 Corps was routed and the rest of the Corps had retired during the night of 22-23rd of August. The 5th Colonial Brigade withdrew from Neufchateau before dawn on 23rd of August, exposing the right flank of 12 Corps, which also fell back. By the end of 23rd of August, the survivors of the 3rd and 4th armies were back to their jumping-off positions except for the 11 and 9 Corps on the northern flank. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Casualties At Rossignol German casualties were circa 1,318 and French casualties, circa 11,277 men. The French 4th Division had circa 1,195 casualties at Bellefontaine against circa 1,920 German casualties. At Neufchateau the 5th Colonial Brigade had circa 3,600 casualties against units of the German 18 Reserve Corps, which suffered circa 1,800 casualties. At Bertry the artillery of the 33rd Division was destroyed and circa 3,181 casualties incurred, against c. One-third the number of German casualties, which were noted as greater than all of the casualties in the Franco-Prussian War. At Massin-Anloy, the French 22nd Division and 34th Division lost 2,240 men killed and the 34th Division was routed. German casualties in the 25th Division were circa 3,224, of whom 1,100 men were killed. At Verdun the French 8th Division was destroyed and the 3rd Division had circa 556 casualties, German losses were circa 1,281 men. In the fighting around Ethi and Bled, the French 7th Division lost 5,324 men and the German 10th Division had circa 1,872 casualties. At Lungui the French V Corps with the 9th and 10th Divisions had circa 2,884 casualties and German units of the 26th Division had circa 1,242 casualties. South of Lungui, German casualties in the 9th and 12th Reserve and 33rd Divisions were circa 4,458 men against the French 12th, 40th and 42nd Divisions, of which the 40th Division was routed. In 2009, Herwig recorded 19,218 casualties from 21 to 31 August, in the 4th Army and 19,017 casualties in the 5th Army. Hoey also recorded 5,500 casualties in the French 8th Division at Verton and wrote that at Ethi, the 7th Division had been stomped. At Ocamps the 20th Infantry Regiment lost 1,300 men, and the 11th Infantry Regiment lost 2,700 of 3,300 men. The 5th Colonial Brigade lost 3,200 of 6,600 men.